Shin Lung, the Dancing Dragons Kung Fu, is a compilation of six animals. Each animal represents a different quality of consciousness, a different way of moving, breathing, and being. So, if we were to start at the base, Black Panther represents the instinctive body. The pure instinctive, my, my somatic experience within my body, and how that connects to the um, instinctive world of the earth and all things in nature. Not just in and of itself instinctive, but how does, how does life feed? How does the natural world feed the somatic experience of that panther? Meaning us, but the quality of us that relates to the panther. Um, the panther has three energy centers, three primary energy centers. The tailbone energy center, which is connected to the earth. The groin, which is connected to the earth. And the belly button, which is connected to the earth. And those three centers have a bowl that they sit in, which we call the bowl of creation. Black panther represents, it has two primary swings. Fear, which is a friend to panther. It helps it to be even more effective in its movement. Fear for a panther is in a negative, it's a positive thing. It uses sensuality, procreative energies. So fear and sensuality are the two, and, and response or reaction. Black Panther is the most perfect reaction machine of all the animals. It responds perfectly to life's impulse. And in its response, it doesn't think about its responses. It just responds. And it feels into. It's an inward feeling response animal. Um, and the way it takes the energy from this, these three centers, the way it expresses it, is through the tendon ligament pulley system of the body. So it learns to breathe into the tendon ligament pulley system of the body. Its mate, it's a male, and its mate, is female, is python. And python represents breath into the bones of the body, into the marrow of the bones, breath into the joints of the bones, breath into the porous bone itself, and learning to breathe into those different qualities. And Python, unlike Panther, is very interested in structure, in form, and in layered structure, in multiplicity of structure, and how different structures interface with one another. So just like the skeleton is involved with structure and form, so is the Python. Okay. The panther is so close to being female, but it's male. It's very feminine in its nature, but it's a male. The python is very male in its nature, but it's female. The two of those animals represent something called the sub-earth dragon. And the sub-earth dragon is the union of the panther qualities and the python qualities. Ancient Chinese mythology, the original snake and cat meet, they fight. In the fight, they're so equally matched that neither can win. And in the fight, they begin to have mutual admiration. The admiration turns to sexual curiosity. And then eventually, sexual full blown act. The panther spends his seed in the python. When it does, he relaxes. As he relaxes, the python ingests the panther whole. As that happens, the consciousness of a new being is born. The sub-earth dragon. It eats its way out of the mother, becoming both male and female at the same time. And having all the traits of panther, all the traits of python, and something new that neither of them had, which is the dragon. This is a metaphor. And the metaphor is no matter how extreme the opposites of what life brings, if you're willing to meet in the cauldron of change and release your fixed sense of what should be, could be, something new can be born in the equal friction of the opposites. And that new thing is in this case a dragon. So the invitation of Chin Lung all the way through it is to include, no matter what comes, to find a way to include it then to inquire into it with such depth and such willingness to release your own fixity of form that a new process can happen. Something that bursts you out of your own fixity of form. 
so that's sub Earth Dragon, and very simply said. And then there's a, a middle, so that's the lower worlds. It represents the subconscious, unconscious. It represents the dream world. It represents all things to do with what comes from underneath coming into form. Tiger and bull, which is the next two animals. Tiger's male, bull is female. Tiger breathes into the belly button chakra, the heart chakra, and, and then finally into the will of the mind. Tiger's all about intent, whereas panther was all about respond. Tiger's about intending forward beyond its own form, imposing its will. And, but in this case, a healthy tiger imposes its will off its own instinctive intelligence, its body intelligence, with its emotional wisdom, with the will of the mind, through the yang muscles of the body, the super yang chi. Tiger's the ultimate male, Boa is the ultimate female. Boa represents void space into empathic space through breath. All the animals, breath is the key. Tiger breathes into the belly button chakra, then the heart chakra, then the will, then extends that chi through the yang muscles. That's it. Boa breathes from void space. Life falls into the void space, which is breath. And that breath fills the void space into huge empathic waves. And those empathic waves connect into the Earth's empathic waves. All the animals are deeply connected to the Earth. They're not separate. They're one with them. In this case, tiger and boa fight as they meet. They become the Earth dragon, which represents everything of the Earth. The seen, the form, and the not seen. Right? And then there's two animals left, white leopard and cobra. White leopard, again, is male, but it, again, very etheric. White leopard is the tendon that breathes into the, the Sudha chakra and the Sahasra. And it is intuition. It's the higher ether of intuition. It barely touches the earth. And when it breathes out, it breathes out through the meridians of the body. So it's all two chakras and meridians, it's as though it has no body at all. It's just this really super fine, barely touching the earth region. Its mate is cobra. Cobra is tailbone energy center of reason too. Jade pillow, which is the occipit, and ajin. Yeah. And the connecting thing that connects those three centers is the nervous system. And that's even a misdirection, it's the 72,000 nadis which is the breath sacs around the nervous system, right? So the cobra, this, and this is called, when those two merge, they are celestial dragon, and they represent all the planes of the heavenly grid. So there's celestial dragon, earth dragon, sub-earth dragon. And in most of the esoteric systems and philosophical systems, you'll notice in the Mayans, in the Aztecs, in the Buddhists, the, there's the three planes of existence and this has a very similar focus. So this is an invitation, a physical invitation system to explore energetic systems of the body, energetic systems of the collective consciousness of humankind, and to learn to identify the, the collective consciousness of a panther, the collective con consciousness of a bow, and invite it in. Now if you can do that with tigers, bows, panthers, you can do it with trees, you can do it with grass, you can do it with the earth itself, you can do it with Mars. Why learn astrology from a book when you can learn astrology by sitting with Jupiter? I mean, how do you think it happened in the first place? So the invitation of the system is to realize that we are not separate. And how can I explore in my consciousness the different qualities of awareness that are available to me that I may not be checking into? Because most people are only operating in one or two houses of consciousness. Like the tiger types usually stay pretty tiger type. But when Boa shows up, it's like, I'm either going to control it or I'm going to do something to it with it. But they don't really try to become it. Just, whereas a Boa is always morphing. The big problem for a Boa is that it's empathically morphing until it never shows up. A tiger holds its shape no matter what. So the invitation is in the system to visit all of the houses and all the animals and have them all equally able to play through the system.